Raycliffe. Ten year vintage torpedo. Hey, Brian McKay, and this is Cigar Vlog. So, uh, yeah, I just kind of happened to get this as part of a um, part of a sampler. So I really don't really know a whole lot about this, other than the fact that it's a apparently a ten year version of the tobacco for the standard Greycliff. Focus on cigar, thank you. Anyway, Greycliff is actually made originally for the Greycliff Hotel, which is in, I believe, the Bahamas. And it's just been in the rest, rest, in the rest, through rest, yes. The last few decades that they started selling to people in general, instead of selling exclusively in the hotel. Normally, Greycliffs are stupidly expensive, but they've also had a few lines recently, like the G2, which are a little bit more budget-friendly. Where this actually sits on that particular scale, I honestly got have no idea. Shush. Okay. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so, right off the bat, <clears throat> very, very toasty. Slightly sweet. It's kind of baking spice. Mm. That is an excellent start. All right. I'm going to go ahead and smoke this down at the first inch and hopefully not rough out wild like a freaking idiot and uh, get back to you with a proper update. <laughs> Okay, so, proper inch in, went ahead and yanked the bands just because they were super loose and uh, kind of wasn't too sure that the cigar wasn't going to just whoosh, slip right out of them. Overall flavor I'm getting so far, it's pretty much clean tobacco, so a bit of spice, occasionally a little bit of sweet. It's kind of interesting because if you let it sit there and linger, you get some other flavor that I can't quite put my finger on. Retrohale has kind of a sweet, bready note to it. Very interesting so far. And yes, I'm back out in the uh, field with all the birds. So, yay, birdies. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, smoke this down at the halfway point. I'm going to say a quick little bit about construction here. Great cliffs are typically known for being very well constructed. And as you can see, the overall wrapper is excellent. It has a little bit of toothiness, which is that little texture to it that uh, is kind of those little flavor, flavor oils bubbling up to the surface of the tobacco. Very nice. Everything's smooth. The only thing here is that it's a torpedo, and you have to be kind of careful with torpedoes because if you don't, you know, you can end up inadvertently taking way too much off. And, my God, I'm about ready to eat that bird. Anyway, <laughs> torpedoes, you have to be kind of careful because they can squeeze down the head and make for a really tarry, funky draw, or you end up taking too much off and they just unravel. Uh, so it's kind of, you have to use your good judgment on that one. Well, anyway, I'm going to smoke this down at the halfway point and give a proper update, see if anything changes or wakes up. All right, well, yeah, she just went, so I figured this is about as good a halfway point as any. So far, I've been noticing, make sure I'm not going to run over by a bicyclist, I've been noticing that uh, flavor-wise, it's been very interesting. It's kind of got this uh, subtle, sweet earthiness. It's kind of reminding me of almost like a jicama. And if you don't know what a jicama is, it's basically this big root bulb thing that it's kind of like a potato without the starch, if that makes any sense. But the uh, main reason for eating jicama is like water. So it's like one of those big root vegetables that you would find if you were stuck out in the ass into nowhere. I'm trying to not have the breeze blow all over my mic. And I'm not too sure how successful it may be. Anyway, there's a little sweetness, a little earthiness, good solid tobacco core. 
Uh, it's got good, strong flavor, but it's light enough to not be just, you know, clubbing you over the head with it. So it's very kind of uh, clean overall palette. Now, as far as the retrohale goes, that's where things are getting interesting because it's got this almost uh, vegetal note to it. You know, it's like, um, it's like walking to a market and smelling fresh produce. Very interesting. Anyway, so far, definitely shaping up to be an excellent cigar for a hot day. By the way, it's like 90 degrees out here, so I'm kind of glad there is a little bit of a breeze. Otherwise, you'd look like my shirt was melting. Well, anyway, I'm going to smoke this down to the uh, end of this. God, that is really a nice wrapper. I really just think I could go on this one. Anyway, I'll catch you at the end point here. Well, that's it. This looks uh, pretty close to the end. Go ahead and tap that. So far, that bird will end up not being on the lower my mic. So far, this is one of those cigars that uh, I'm pretty sure everybody's going to have a slightly different experience with. I've noticed it's light, it's clean, slightly sweet, a little earthy. And it's got a lot of different flavors going on in it, especially if you incorporate the Retro Hill, which, like I said, has kind of that fresh produce kind of thing going on. Yeah, overall, excellent cigar for a hot day. When it comes to drink pairings, definitely whiskey. You can try it with coffee, or, this might sound a little blasphemous to some, you might try a nice tea. <coughs> Long Island. <coughs> Excuse me. Otherwise, there's not much else to say about it, other than if you can find it for a decent price, go ahead and give them a shot. Definitely worth it. Anyway, <laughs> that's pretty much all I got to say about this. Like I said, give it a shot. Shut the fuck up, you little bastard. I swear that bird is just like trying to piss me off. <sighs> anyway, I don't have much else to say about this. If you like this review or any other review, blah, like, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know if you've had a different experience. Also, check out my Twitch stream, Sundays and Wednesday nights, midnight to 2 a.m., usually up for like a week or two afterwards. Other than that, that's pretty much all I get. I'll see you next time.